hello, and welcome back to Pod Band Pipecast. The premier pipe band podcast. So, everyone, welcome back and Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Yay. It's 2020! It is. We all have 2020 vision now. Uh-huh. Hey! <laughs> so funny. Um, so, right. we went on a field trip today. We did. Um, back it up. At Foster, after Foster's episode, we were talking about um, different kinds of bagpipes and like the history of bagpipes. And we were like, oh, it'd be super cool to learn more about the history of bagpipes and like what other kinds of bagpipes there are in the world. And so we did. We went on a field trip. Yes, we went to the MIM. The Musical Instrument Museum. Ooh. Um, and we went there looking for all kinds of bagpipes. For people that don't know, uh, the Musical Instrument Museum is a really cool museum we have here in Arizona. With musical instruments. With musical instruments. And it's got... All these galleries focus on all these different countries. I don't know if it's every country in the world, but it's like a, a lot. lot. Yes. A lot of them. And there's um, instruments from almost every country in the world. And you walk around and you can actually hear them. You have a little headset. Yeah. yeah. And there's videos. So we went there looking for bagpipes. And boy, did we find bagpipes. Oh, yes. We found all the bagpipes. <laughs> Lots of different bagpipes. And it was a lot of fun. Um, it was kind of interesting to see... Uh, Sort of the evolution, almost, of bagpipes. Yeah. Like, and the different, like, styles in the different countries. Yeah. And you could almost tell, you, you could see that, like, bagpipes were, like, kind of started with, like, the um, cane reed in the, uh, the f- almost looks like a flute kind of instrument. Mm-hmm. And then they just put a bag on it because, you know. And that's a bagpipe. And that's a bagpipe. It's a pipe with a bag. Done. Hey. Call it quits. <laughs> Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through um, some of the bagpipes that we saw, right? Yes. And talk about what they look like. And if you are a Patreon subscriber for the low, low price of $5 per month, you can actually see our pictures of all of these different kinds of bagpipes. And if not, then we are just going to describe to you. Just close your eyes and imagine. Yes. With us. Yes. And we'll describe to you what these wonderful bagpipes look like. And they're they're really a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's dive on into the history. Yeah. So tell me about Athena and her thoughts. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were researching bagpipe history and there's a lot of like strange stories of like how bagpipes came to be. Um and like we were saying when we were walking around the museum we saw that and and part of the museum had a bagpipe exhibit and they said, Well, bagpipes came from there were these pipes, and you stuck a bag on them, and that's how they happened. So there was this uh, ancient Greek instrument called the aulos, which was, I don't know if I'm saying that right. By the way, we're going to be saying a lot of different names in this uh, video. And they'll probably be mispronounced, and I am yeah, sorry. We're, we're very sorry. If we mispronounce it, we're, we're trying, or we're trying our best. <laughs> <laughs> so the aulos, which is like a uh, a double double pipe instrument, has two... Um, flute looking things that come together in one reed and the legend goes in ancient Greece that Athena invented that instrument and she was playing it and then she saw her reflection like in like a pond or something and she saw that her cheeks were all puffed out which I mean come on we we all know how that looks that, yep. you know, <laughs> pipers if you've ever taken a picture of a piper playing you can tell you know their cheeks get all puffed out so <laughs> Theoretically, um, Athena saw herself and she was like, oh, that's what I look like playing this? Get this out of here. And she basically threw it away and then it was picked up by the other mythical creatures and whatnot. Um, So she got rid of the aulos because it made her look bad. And then we were (laughs) blessed with bagpipes. Yes. And that was... Well, uh, no, we were blessed with the pipes. And then they threw a bag on it. (laughs) And then they threw a bag on it. Yeah. (laughs) There's an ancient Roman author um, that wrote about an emperor who we think was Nero, probably. Yeah. um, And how he could play the aulos using a bag underneath his arm so that he could avoid having the unsightly bulging of his face. So that's pretty neat. It's possible that Nero may have played the bagpipes. See... And the tough thing about learning the history of bagpipes is I read that, and then I also read that people analyzed the drawings more, and it's just him drinking out of a wine skin. I mean, so like, if you liked wine, what's wrong with that? <laughs> so yeah, so the, 
that's the tough thing about learning about the history of bagpipes is like there's there's all these like carvings or drawings or paintings where it's like oh this is definitely someone playing the bagpipes but then you look at it and you're like is it is, is it the pipes? Is that? like supposedly Nero minted a coin with himself playing the bagpipes on it supposedly supposedly and we looked at it and it kind of just looks like a like a throne with some sticks on it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so could it be bagpipes could be could also just be Nero just with a bundle of sticks or yeah. maybe he's drinking some wine or <laughs> maybe all of the above yeah but there are some some concrete um sort of evidence of bagpipes in history that i was uh looking up and i saw this little spooky boy with the i'll show you a picture if you're on the video there's a spooky boy which is a carving in the from on a chapel or on a cathedral a monastery from the 12th century in catalonia which is spain and it's a little little boy playing the bagpipes Ooh, so spooky boy <laughs> it's a very spooky looking little gargoyle man playing the bagpipes and once again that's from the 12th century so i mean bagpipes are pretty old yeah yeah although not exactly in the form that we know of them in the pipe band world right they have definitely evolved over the years starting from just like a pipe and then adding a bag and then adding drones Mm -hmm. and that was something we saw at the mim too that there were all these different countries with bagpipes where it's just a pipe stuck in a bag or a pipe stuck in a sheepskin or or in a gourd (laughs) yeah or in a gourd which is like okay i guess that counts (laughs) it's in the shape (laughs) yeah uh so most likely so we don't know so long story short it's kind of a mystery right History is written written by the winners, so yes. we don't know. Scotland wants their history to be bagpipes. Yeah. Are, are bagpipe, bagpipes. Are bagpipers winners? Yes, they are. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> no, it's it's hard to know. It's hard to know if like if bagpipe if bagpipes originated in let's say Greece or Rome and then they were brought by the Romans into the United Kingdom, what we know as the United Kingdom, Great Britain, um, or if it was that the Scottish and uh, Celtic peoples there already had their own bagpipes, that's possible as well. Yeah. We're not totally sure, and that's the one thing that if you look into this kind of thing, you'll realize like, oh, well, so-and-so said this, and that's definitely what it is. But if you start looking into primary sources, it's like, I don't think anyone is really sure. So what we are pretty sure about is that once again, the like 12th century is when bagpipes were like totally mainstream in Europe or more, more mainstream. Um, And there's actually a mention of bagpipes in the Canterbury Tales, which was written between like 1380 and like 1400. So Canterbury Tales being for those less literature inclined, um, were written in the uh, British Isles. So from that, from that, we know that there were bagpipes existing there in like the 14th century, at least, possibly longer. <laughs> but interestingly, they may have not had drones. Yes. Right? Or may have had one drone. And that was another thing at the MIM that once again, we'll go through our, our pictures with you in a, in a moment, but... Some bagpipes don't have drones. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like you're looking at those bagpipes with no drones and you're like, wait, why are there drones? <laughs> <laughs> why do we have drones in our bagpipes? They they just make one constant tone. What is the purpose of that? And when, why did, why would anyone think they would want that? Um, so what we found out is basically that bagpipes had one drone or no drone in Scotland up until... The, I think it was the 1500s? 1500s, yeah. Ish. And that around the 1500s to 1600s, it was probably more like two drones. And then we definitely know in like the 1600s to 1700s, that's when they had three drones. Yes. So that's where we get our image of like the three drone Great Highland bagpipe, which is what we call it. Yeah. Yeah. I read this little tidbit that in... um, there's some written mention from 1623 of a piper from Perth being prosecuted for playing pipes on the Sabbath. Oh, yeah. 
Because, you know, bagpipes on the Sabbath, no one wants that. Yeah, no one. <laughs> <laughs> can't be working on the Sabbath. Like, bagpipes are work. Yeah. What are you doing? Also in history, the bagpipes became a battle and war instrument. Um, and it said that battle bagpipes could have could be heard from like ten miles away. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> you ever like pull up to the parking lot in a Highland game at a Highland Games? That's how like... I know. Like when we're going to a gig, that's yeah. how I know where to find you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you pull up and you're like, "Where's the band? Oh, there they are. <laughs> Follow the bagpipes." And also, the Great Highland bagpipes are not the only ones that are played in Scotland and obviously also in Ireland as well. There's all kinds of different bagpipes still to this day. Um, the Scottish small pipes and the border pipes are other pipes that are played in Scotland and also in other places in the world. Um, and those are considered more like lowland pipes. I guess if you want to categorize like great highland bagpipes versus lowland yeah. pipes. They're pretty fun though. I know Foster said he's playing with a set of small pipes. Yeah. So... Those are fun. They're a lot quieter also. I read a, a little tidbit at the MIM that was like, these small bagpipes are good for indoor group events. Yeah. Or playing with other instruments. Yeah, when you don't want to be like super, super loud. Yeah, like if you're playing <laughs> at a wedding. Yes. Oh, interesting story. One of our pipers <laughs> was uh, was hired. I think they actually hired two of our pipers to play at a wedding locally and it was kind of a small area, and I kind of don't think they know they knew what bagpipes were like. They wanted pipes, <laughs> but they didn't really want pipes. Yeah, so they hired two of our bagpipers, and the bagpipers showed up to play at the, the at the reception for this wedding, and the guests were kind of just annoyed. And eventually, the bride went up and was like, "Please leave because you're too loud." <laughs> She's well. First, she said, "Can you turn it down a little bit?" And then they're like, "No, that's not how bagpipes work." Okay, then please leave kind of like okay well we, do we still get paid <laughs> so yeah small pipes great for playing indoors yes try it out if you're a piper going yeah, to not going to gigs pipers that do fun gigs yeah fun gigs we have a i think foster mentioned this too we've uh, in his episode we've played with other instruments before in some sets yeah. it's a lot of fun we've never tried small pipes with other instruments that might be a good idea I know Doesn't it's been your done. your mom have some? She does, yeah. We could do this. We could. We could make this happen. Yes. <laughs> or we could get some of those pipes from the MIM. Try those out. When we get um, big and famous. Yes. Yeah. Maybe one day. Or maybe the MIM will loan us out some pipes. <laughs> some of those, uh, all those different, I can't even. There were so, so many fuzzy ones, too. There were. And that's something that I kind of wish we would bring back, right? Yeah. <laughs> or those glittery ones. Uh, yes. Okay, so let's get into talking about all those other bagpipes now yes. that we have the full appreciation of, yes, bagpipes are from everywhere. Yes, they're in Scotland. Yes, they are from Scotland, but also from, also other, from other places. places. And that's fine. That's totally fine. Other places can have bagpipes, too. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess. I guess. I think we all just kind of have this image of, like, we're, we're, when we're playing pipes or playing in a pipe band, you're like, have this image of like, oh, this is the way they used to do it back in, you know, the day or whatever. It's like, but like, it's it back in the day may have only been like the 1700s. And that's okay. Not saying that like it was not exactly the same or that your culture, your tradition that you're, that you're um, being an ambassador for today. Not saying that that's not ancient because it is. It's still a long time and it's good. It's just, you know, it's one of one facet of what we do. And yeah. It's it's worthwhile to kind of appreciate other cultures bagpipes as well. Yes. So let's take a look at these bagpipes right here. We started in the in the musical instrument museum, they have they have it segmented off based on continent. So we started in Africa, correct? Mm -hmm. These first set of pipes are from Libya and they are called the Zokra? Zokra? Z O K R A? Bagpipe. Uh, yep. And they're made of goatskin, cane, cow horn, and wood. And they kind of look like a chicken. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, with the little... <laughs> they, got little, they got little arms. Yeah. Okay, so it's a bag and it's got a stick sticking out of the top. I think that's where you, where you blow, blow it right? Too. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, 
at the bottom of the bag, it has like a double um, double chanter chanter with uh, little horns on the end that are like flanged out, probably to like give a greater sound, like like a tone to it, most likely, I yeah. guess. And then it's got these uh, this bag, and it's got two little arms on the bag, little chicken arms, <laughs> little chicken arms, and they just have little pieces of wood on it. Like it, it would. You could imagine it being like maybe a pelt of an animal of some kind. Uh, and a goat. A goat. Yes, goat skin. Goat skin. So then they just, you know, sewed together the arms and then they stuck a stick in where the neck would be. And then maybe the bottom part is maybe another leg or something. And they <laughs> stick, stuck the channers in there. Yeah. It's really fascinating. No drones. Like we said before, some of these don't have drones and that's fine. It also looks like the um, the little hand bits are um the channer bits are like put together to the cow horn with like mud or something yeah does that look like mud that looks like mud to me or clay of some yeah kind. so definitely so interesting libyan bagpipes pipes. there libyan bagpipes yes and then we have some bagpipes from mauritania and they've mauritania. got a little shirt over them yeah they have a nice little little shirt dressing them up instead of like a it probably is like a hide bag in there yeah kind. oh um and they are the mizwid mizwid from tunisia in the late 20th century they are animal skin textile wood animal horn nice these look very similar to the other ones mm -hmm. so just picture those but like with a little poncho a little over poncho the bag <laughs> a little bagpipe poncho yeah i like that got a little disco ball necklace is that yeah, supposed to be good it's got a little charm on it i think I think oh, that's just a little charm. That's fun. Good luck charm. And it kind of has like a horn oh, on yeah. the side, like a little pointy horn. Hmm. Okay, the ladybug pipes. From the Arabian Peninsula. We were referring to them as ladybug pipes because the bag is um, red with black spots. It's yeah. really cute. They're the, the gerbin. Gerbin. Um, from Dubai. Yes. They are goatskin, wood, cane, and textile nice and they got some fun recorder looking chanters yeah once again a double chanter um like imagine two like chanters like stuck together that's what this looks like so that was once again the the outlaws was like a, a double chanter sort of instrument so that might have been where that came from it might have been like a an idea that someone had back in the day like oh we need two of these and then we've got some pipes from Iran. They're called the um, the Ney Anban, N E Y space A N B A with a line over it and then N. And they are made of sheepskin, cane, wood, plastic, wax, textile, metal. So these ones are a little more elaborate. Yeah, and that looks like they just took a sheepskin, and they kind of and sewed, plugged it up. Yeah. Yeah, they sewed up like. The sides and then the the top. They put a like one of the armholes. Maybe they put a chanter in there, and then the bottom armhole, they put a double or a they put the double chanters in there, and then one of them they put a blow stem in there. Yeah. No drones once again, but it is a pipe, uh, with a bag on it. So bagpipe. Bagpipe. And what's really interesting is they have videos where you can see some of these instruments being played, and. Going back to Foster's episode when he was talking about when you're playing the pipes, which Adela and I didn't know. A lot of you that are pipers will already know this, but when you're playing the pipes, you play them with your middle knuckles and not um, with the tips of your fingers. So if you watch any of the videos of these pipes being played, that's how they're being played. So we have that in common with all these other types of bagpipes. Yeah. Um, so then we have some bagpipes from Turkey, and these are some very nice sparkly bagpipes. Ooh, these are nice. These are pretty. They are the Tulum bagpipes. They are made of goatskin, boxwood, textile, and bulrush. They are played primarily in shepherd villages in northeastern Turkey. Bagpipes may have originated in Turkey over 2,000 years ago. Nice. Yeah, and these, once again, it's a very sparkly textile bag. And it has a double chanter. It has a really interesting, like... Like a, like a picture, like a laundry chute. Yes. The bottom looks like a laundry chute. And then you got the 
the channers that's what the channers uh, go out into and then your blow stem is pretty much just a stick these blow stems don't look as like ergonomically friendly yeah and they're also really short so you gotta get like yeah. gotta get up really in it. close to it <laughs> yeah these are from georgia um they are the oh man the gudast viri Good, huh? viri yeah. gudast viri <laughs> They're made of sheepskin, textile, wood, bullhorn, metal, and stones. Um, and yeah, they're very fancy, nice, like red velvet looking bag with a very dangly chanter. Oh yeah, that chanter is all blinged out. Yeah. So it's a, a chanter that ends in a like the horn of a bull and there's some charms hanging on it, some like chains and gems and it's very pretty wish we had bling in our band right <laughs> <laughs> sparkly pipe bags and bling that's what we need yes um and then these ones aren't really bagpipes but they look like bagpipes and they're from bangladesh but they're like um like drones and like uh, a little blow stick thingy on on a gourd on a right? gourd yeah it's just bamboo and gourd called the plunky and i just feel like these um mouth organs need to be mentioned because they they look just like bagpipes yeah we were walking through and we were like wait are those bagpipes and they have these in all kinds of different countries uh mouth organs of all kinds of different kinds that mm -hmm. when there are a few pictures of them yeah yeah when they're played they sound like an organ but because the the air goes through like the drone looking things sticking out um it's basically like a, a gourd with some drones and a blow stem. It's really fascinating. And then we've got these small bagpipes. Small bagpipes. Highland bagpipe made of animal skin, wood, metal, and fabric. And they're teeny tiny. They're teeny tiny bagpipes. These are from Cape Breton? Yes. Which um, is in Nova Scotia in Canada, which makes a lot of sense because, you know... Nova Scotia. It's New Scotland. There's a lot of like Celtic tradition in Nova Scotia and that's why they have like those are Scottish bagpipes. Hmm. Only they're very small and they're cute. But they've got three drones. They do have three drones and a blow stem and a channer. And then we're in Scotland. Hey, we made it to Scotland. And so we were talking about this when we were walking around that like the bagpipes that they have um as like an example i don't i'm not familiar with pipe makers we're not we don't know we're drummers what yeah. do we know <laughs> <laughs> we don't know these were made in the 1950s um by hector russell who's a bagpipe maker um yeah and it's just a typical set of scottish bagpipes they have the traditional name there which is <sighs> gonna try to pronounce that <laughs> it's one of those gaelic names that looks like a piob mahor but that's not how you say it and i don't know how to say that yeah i'm, not, I'm gonna try <laughs> it's like seeing the word pibrock written out for the first time and you're like that's not how you that's not how you say that <laughs> well and now we're in spain and we've got some cabaret bagpipes where they only have one drone. Yeah. Um, and um, they are made by Joseph Kosterost. Uh, and he was one of the two most important cabaret makers of his generation. Cabret. Hmm. Cabret. Yeah. So now we see some bagpipes that are starting to have drones. Yeah. And these ones are also from Spain. They... Beauzy. Beauzy. Um, Beauzy. Nice. Or Beauzy. I don't know. And yeah. They look like a bag with a blow stem, a single drone that looks really tall, like maybe like a bass drone equivalent, and a pipe channer that looks very much like a pipe channer that we are familiar with. Um, some of the other countries had like the channer ending with like a horn or like a little flange out but these are very much the same as the other ones and now we have some more spanish bagpipes this the spaniards really like bagpipes apparently. 
Um, and this one has more drones. This one has three drones? It looks like yeah, three drones. I think those are three drones. And interestingly, these pipes, what are these called, by the way? They are called the oop, Sac de... Sac de Gemex. Yeah. From Catalonia, Spain. Yeah, so it's a bag. And it's kind of like long. And it's got like a blow stem and a channer. And then it ends with like a circular cylinder looking thing. And it has three drones sticking straight out of that. Which is really interesting. I'm really curious to hear these played. They didn't have these being played in the video. They didn't have a lot of them being played. And it was really disappointing. Yeah, some of them and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I see that's bagpipes. I can hear that it sounds like bagpipes. And some of them you're like, I really want to hear this. Might have to Google it later, see what we can find. Yeah. We've got some Irish bagpipes here. We have the Illin pipes. And these are, yeah, these look similar to, I know Illin pipes are played uh, a lot in modern times, often in conjunction with like what we like pipe band music or maybe you have concerts where you have someone playing Illin pipes with other instruments and they're very nice. They have like a bellows and... Yeah, they have three drones, looks like. One very, very long drone. One very long drone. And they're played with the bellows instead of having a blow stem. Which I imagine is really different for a lot of pipers because they're like, hold on, I don't have to blow into it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would be more difficult with like having to also do the notes on the chanter. Because mm -hmm. you have to, well, I guess your arm... I don't know. I don't know how these things are played off. That's true. Yeah. And we've mm -hmm. got some Romanian pipes. Romanian pipes. These have no drones. Kitchen. Simpoi? C I M P O I? You say that how it should be said. Sure. Um, Please tell us how to say this if you know how. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back down to one drone. One drone, and it's got some tassels on this bag, which is very nice. Fun looking bag. Uh, one drone and a channer. Some tassels. It looks very nice. Yeah. That's fancy looking channer. That's another thing. Some of these were like really carved and like pretty looking. And I know in pipe bands we have like a more standardized look to bagpipes. So like if you had like a face carved into your, your drone stocks, people would be like, what? What is that? <laughs> but that's you're walking around this museum and you're like, oh, other countries do fun things with their yeah. bagpipes. Then we've got some Greek bagpipes here. What is this? Sambuna? Yeah. Hmm. Yes, they uh, have the sort of channer with the ending in the horn of some kind flanged out into a horn. And it's a double channer. I think like. we're back out to no drones. No drones. Blow stem, channer, no drones. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> Malta. These pipes. These pipes from Malta. This is, this is my personal favorite type of pipes that we saw in the museum. Um, it's literally... What, what is this called, first of all? It is the Zac. Zac? Z-A-Q-Q. -Q. And um, this literally is like a calf that was like the skin of a calf. And instead of... Like, where the legs are, the legs are tied off, and then it has, like, a channer where, like, the That's neck is. But is that the neck? Is that the neck, or is that the other end? I thought that was the butt. <laughs> well, it looks like you blow in the butt. <laughs> no, what is this? Oh, I thought that was the leg. Yeah, what is this right here? Oh. I think you blow in there. I think you blow in one of the... Legs. legs okay so you blow in one of the legs and the channer part is like a horn that comes out the neck which is facing down and like so just imagine this is like a calf that's like upside down and you're holding it upside down <laughs> and there's a channer horn sticking out of its neck and that's exactly what it looks like that's 100 percent what it is and it's kind of sad, actually, because 
um, this is one of the ones that we didn't see demonstrated in a video or anything. And I was reading the placard and it said, there's no one left alive that plays this instrument. Like, it is extinct. It's wild. <laughs> it's an extinct <laughs> instrument. And that's kind of sad. Um, and actually, you can also remove the uh, horn, which is in the channer end. Yes. And it's believed to protect against the evil eye. It can be re removed and used as a weapon. So that's fun. The double um, purpose. Dual purpose. Yes. Yeah. So it's just kind of sad because I'm like, man, this is fascinating looking. And we'll never get to see and it. And we'll in never action. get to see it played because there's no one who plays it. Let's just bring Foster to the mim. Yeah. And... Foster, play those bagpipes. <laughs> I want to know how they're played. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have some Italian bagpipes here. Uh, okay. I practiced saying this one Zampogna a chiave. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's right. I don't know. They're made of fruit wood, bladder, bladder and leather. Yeah, so some of these were hide and some were bladders. Yes. That's interesting. So they would take like the bladder of a cow or a bull and that was the bag. And this one has very similar to the Spanish bagpipes where the drones point down. There's three drones. Yes. Looks like. Coming out of that circle thing. Coming out of that uh, cylinder looking thing with a blow stem and a channer. And then there's also this little separate piece which they exhibited next to it. Which is played often as <coughs> played often as a duo with the bagpipes. What is that called? I did not get that. <laughs> I think that's, here. that's the bagpipes. Oh, it's yeah. also yeah. Charamella. Charamella. It's made out of fruit wood. Yeah, and it's typically played as a duo with the bagpipes. So that's kind of fascinating to me that it's like you always have bagpipes and this other instrument so yeah it's not just you know bagpipes it's bagpipes and this little what looks like a recorder or a flute yeah it looks like the bottom of a like a practice chanter with, yeah. the, with a bell thing at the end yeah so imagine playing your bagpipes and also being like well in order to have a complete piece of music i have to have someone playing the practice chanter with me that's kind of how it seems <laughs> all right so we've got some macedonian pipes um, the Gaida G A J D A Ga Gaida Yeah, yeah. They are single drone pipes. Yes, and they're often used for um, dancing and other rituals and entertainment. And they have one drone and a blow stem, which looks a little bit more ergonomic than other ones we've seen, and a single chanter. And the bag looks like it's made of some kind of skin. Yes. So Macedonian bagpipes. Then we've got some Serbian bagpipes. Serbian bagpipes. These have some like fun things tied on the channer. That's fun. And these are called Gajdi. Gaida. Yeah. Same thing as the other one. Um, yep, yeah, they're from Serbia and G-A-J-D-E. Yeah, I don't know how you pronounce that in Serbia. Um, <laughs> and they have a single drone that can play medley, melody and harmony. Interesting. And yeah. It's very long. Very long drone. Extremely long drone. And it has like a, it's like a gourd looking thing at the end of it. Yeah. Swedish bagpipes. Sackpiper. Sackpiper. Sack. We're probably saying this wrong. I know. It's probably, someone's going to be like, sack people. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Anyway. It has a single chanter and a single drone. But still looks very similar to, I mean, if you added two more drones, it would look similar to the Great Highland bagpipes. Yes. The bag is not nearly as uh, different as some of the other ones we've seen. Um, then we've got some Croatian pipes. The pipe. A second musician accompanies the pipe with a second double chanter. Hmm. Yeah, once again, I it's interesting to think, like, if you had your instrument in a museum, what would they say about it? Because, like, some of these are, like, they're only ever played with this second chanter or whatever. Like, you have to do that. And, like, in pipe bands, we might be like, oh, well, it's only ever played as a bagpipe and a snare drum and a bass drum and a tenor. Like, you have to have the whole band there. 
probably you don't have to, but like traditionally is what that is. is what it is. Um, and then we've got some Tunisian pipes. Zucra. Zucra. Um, it has a cane double chanter with a cow horn bell. And looks like some of the first sets of pipes that we talked about. Yeah, it's got a stick and then double chanter with some horns coming out of it. Then we've got some Romanian pipes. Very pretty bag there. Nice pattern. Chimpoi? Simpoi? They're made with wood, animal bladder, and textile. Mm -hmm. And some French pipes. The French had a couple different sets of bagpipes there, which was interesting. Yeah, these ones are very long. Um, the Grande Musette. Grande Musette. Made from fruit wood, pewter, and leather. And is typical of central France. And these are really long so so long (laughs) so long it has a single drone well okay what we got going on here what we got going on here France what what are you doing France is this like a (laughs) handle those look like hand grips okay so it looks like it has two channers one is longer than the other and there's this triangular shaped bag made of leather out of which at the top sticks a blow stem, which looks very much like a Great Highland bagpipe blow stem. It's got some nice carvings on it. And then a really, really, really long drone sticking straight up in the air. Long boy. Yeah, so two different channers on that one. Gajdi? 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 G-A-J-D-Y? European countries be throwing the, dra- the J's in there, and I'm just like, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Yeah, and it says these ones are played over the shoulder. So probably similar to the way that Scottish bagpipes are played. Yeah. And this is like a very, very fluffy... Looks like a swan. Yeah, a swan, like, very fluffy. Pro- well, it's it's fur, so it's probably a goat. And it has this beautiful head that is just... It's gorgeous. It's like It looks like a goat head. But it's made of like wood and um, precious stones, and it I think is the chanter. But then what is this thing? But then what is that thing sticking out oh, down there? Oh, is it a drone? Oh, I think it's a drone. I think yeah. It's a drone. And it has a drone sticking out at the bottom, with like a um, a curved up bell. Yeah, a curved up bell looking thing, so the sound can go out. Yeah. And it's got a blow stem on top. Beautiful fur though. A lot of these, it seemed like they just like killed a goat or a sheep and then just, just tied it off. Just tied it off and just stuck some pipes. Yeah, in, which is probably how it you know originated. Some Ukrainian pipes. The duda. The duda. It's made with pear wood, goat skin, metal, and beads, and they are played typically during weddings or and were later replaced by the button accordion. That was another thing that was interesting about researching history was that like bagpipes only had a certain number of notes and when accordions and pianos started to be used a lot of countries stopped really caring about the bagpipes because they're like we have so many notes now we can play so many things why would you ever want an instrument that can only play nine notes (laughs) (laughs) and then we are in latvia dudas 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 and um it has a single drone I'm um, in a single chanter, and it's very furry. It is extremely furry. Once again, it looks like they tied off a, you know, goat and stuck some pipes in it. It's got like a really strange looking drone. Hmm. Is that a drone? Yeah, that's a drone. Yeah, it's a tall drone, and it's got a chanter ending in a horn and a blow stem, and it is very furry, as we said. And now we are at the Czech Republic. With the duty. The duty. These are Bohemian and Slavic bagpipes, and they have stylized goat heads on the melody pipe. Um, both Czech and Polish duty use bellows to supply the air. Yes, and this is another beautiful goat head. Um, and this is complicated. So it's got, it looks like a goat skin, once again, that they've tied off. And 
there's a goat head on top that's made out of wood. And then there's this like horizontal drone going off to one side that then connects to a drone piece that goes straight down, which connects into a horn that goes that goes up back up. So it's a strange like like a, a contraption looking thing. And then off to the other side of the bag, horizontal is another drone looking piece that then goes straight down into a bellows. And that's how you would play it. And then there's this horn. I think that's, is that like a chanter cover? I think that's, yeah, I think that's for the chanter. Hmm. Very fascinating. We gotta start putting more goat heads on bagpipes. Yes, bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're in Poland. Uh, with another Another duty. duty. Very similar. Um, another duty. And this one has two horns. Duty Wilkopolski. Meaning bagpipe of the Great Plain. Ah. Yeah, and it looks um, very similar. It's got a bellows and two horns sticking out of the sides of the bag. That's very, yeah. Hmm. Now we are at Slovakia. With the Gajdi. Yeah, I think we, I think we, we saw one of these. But it's another version of a similar one that we've seen before. Yeah. And so. this one is made of a goat pelt, maple, and rosewood, aluminum, and an am- animal horn. Yeah. And now we're at Russia. Russian bagpipes. Shuvir. Shuvir bagpipe. And a zaleka. A reed pipe. So these are two that are once again paired together, which are very similar. It's just one of them has a bag and one of them does not. So one of them is just a chanter looking thing with a, it kind of fl- uh, flares out into a horn at the end. And then the other one has a chanter, same chanter looking thing stuck into a bag with a blow stem on it. Stuck into a cow bladder. A cow bladder. That's right. The bag is a cow bladder. And now we're in Bulgaria. And we got some... Kabagaida. Kabagaida. And these ones are larger so that the player can also sing. Oh, so they can just sing while they're, you know, yeah. not blowing it. They're just using the bag and they're singing at the same time. It's got another long chanter. Very long chanter, very long drone. And now we are at Glen Campbell with some Highland bagpipes. Um, not at Glen Campbell. This is <laughs> Glen Campbell's. <laughs> So downstairs in uh, the museum, they have the artist galleries, which walks through a lot of uh, famous uh, musical artists and their careers and some of their instruments and their costumes and just really cool stuff about them. And there was a piper featured there. It was Glenn Campbell, who was not primarily a piper. He was primarily a guitarist. Um, But they did have some pictures of his bagpipes there. They wanted you to know. He's proud of his ancestry. Yes. And he wants to display them. Yeah, which is cool. We like that when they acknowledge bagpipers and their roles in history. Yeah. Um, there was, as we said, a Scotland exhibit, and there was actually also a um, bagpipe wall where they said, these are bagpipes from all over the countries. And we took a selfie there. So if you saw our picture on our Facebook page. Yes. That's, that's where that was. That's where that was. And for anyone that would like to know, once again... I always think it's interesting if you think about your instrument and what are they going to show you if your instrument was in a museum. They had a video screen playing some examples of pipe music. There was a selection from The Roses of Prince Charlie by the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards. And they were playing that. It was on a DVD, it was a DVD recording. And they also had a March Strassbane reel set, um, The Roster Volunteers and Maggie Cameron played by Angus McColl from the Piping Live DVD from 2005. So that's really interesting. So they played uh, the first one and then that second MSR, and then they also played an Asturian bagpipe and snare drum performance. So really interesting to see Scottish bagpipes right next to all these other different countries' bagpipes, how they sound different, how they're played, what are the traditions for playing them. And it really makes you think kind of about our traditions and what makes us different or the same from all these other countries and their instruments. Yeah. 
Another interesting thing we were talking about as we were walking through the museum was we often say that bagpipes are a weird instrument because like we talked about in Foster's episode, like how does it even make noise? What is this thing with the bag and pipes sticking out of it? What, why would you do this? <laughs> um, but there are so many instruments at the Musical Instrument yes. Museum. Just there's so if you, if you're ever in Phoenix and you have the opportunity to go, definitely go, especially if you like music because you will just be floored by how just every country and every culture in the world There's has music. so many different instruments. Yeah, and it's and some of them are very similar to other countries, and some of them are, like, completely their own thing. So it's really fascinating. Yeah. Um, but what is the weirdest instrument in the museum? Like, bagpipes are weird, but are they the weirdest instrument, do you think? I'll, I really enjoyed the piece of metal with the butter knife. Yes, that was beautiful. <laughs> There's like, there's instruments that you think like, that's not an instrument, but like people need to play music, right? That was, that was pretty evident from everything in the, in the museum. I thought was like people of every culture have this great need to play music. And if they have nothing else, they will, they will figure it out. They'll figure it out. They have like a piece of metal with like a butter knife. There was one that was like a cow skull and you just scraped stick on the, yeah on the teeth. And there was another one, which I think was probably my choice for weirdest instrument which was a car exhaust pipe that they would blow into oh and it was like that's how you that's if you have nothing else you will (laughs) find a way to make music yeah (laughs) it's just it's so fascinating and then like the the ugly stick i really it's it's a stick with a boot yes um and then it had a hair like some hair and a hat on the top yeah, and, and it was beautiful. That's what it's called. It's an ugly stick, and it's from um, was it Canada? Canada? Yeah, it's from Canada. It's very, it's beautiful. I highly recommend checking out videos of people playing the ugly stick. I've looked it up before, and it's <laughs> it's something else. It's you can you know make your own instrument, play your own music, and have that contribution. That's fascinating. Yeah. So. There was also a section of instruments that were made out of, like, basket material. Like, it was, like, a trumpet, and it was woven from, like, basket things. Because you want to play a trumpet. I would enjoy how to hear that sounds. Yeah. You want to play a trumpet, but you don't have a trumpet. So you take a basket and yeah. make it happen. <laughs> There's a great um, orchestra that's by... Uh, that's can, I don't know if, you, if they had it at the museum. They used to have it at the museum. <laughs> Um, which was instruments from the uh, recycled orchestra where they had. Oh, yeah, they did have that. Did you see that? Yeah. Um, They're all like pieces of trash, basically, that they've made into violins and cellos. It was really cool, yeah. It was awesome. It's like, if you want to play music, you'll find Make it happen. (laughs) (laughs) And that's like something that we often forget because bagpipes and drums are such a high-maintenance, like kind of expensive instrument. It's like thousand two thousand dollars for a set of bagpipes and like a thousand dollar like eight hundred to a thousand dollars for like drums for what we do and you think like oh yeah whatever it's like you want to play so you got to get an instrument but like we kind of forget some people don't have that ability yeah i think in the video that they were showing it was um some town that was built on a landfill and then a violin happened to be in the trash so they were like let's do this yeah let's make these yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's inspirational I think it really makes you not take yourself so seriously mm-hmm. because you're like, okay, we're just, we're just all at the end, at the end of the day, we're all just musicians and there's millions of people in the world who are making music also. Mm-hmm. And if they have nothing else, they have a piece of metal or a piece of trash <laughs> <laughs> and they'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your inspirational pickup for the day. Go make music with whatever you have available. <laughs> if you're not practicing right now, you should be. The episode's over, so bust out so that chanter. Go play your music right now. Now. You still here? Go. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this show, then support us on Patreon for exclusive content, as well as the video of us recording this. We'll have special exercises we'll be writing, as well as tips and tricks with tenor drumming and other instruments to come. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube for some tenor tutorials and possibly other tutorials later on. Um, and like us on Facebook at Podman Pipecast.